I well, so I'm glad you said that because you know, 49ers, the Lance injury. Like it's tough. Like I was rooting for Buddy, you know, Trey Lance, he uh broke his ankle if I'm not mistaken, right? Like, and I'm rooting mm-hmm. for Cubs because yeah. you know his name is Trey and how y'all doing? But like Right. Like dog, like I should we be excited more now about the about the 49ers with Trey Lance out of the lineup or because you got Jimmy G, porn star Jimmy as some people call him. Like how how are we uh, should we really should we really love Jimmy G? Because I mean I take this kind of sound overrated sometimes, but then he produced, even though his stats aren't really gaudy like that. Like I take this punch. I take the first crack at it. I think is I want to say a, a blessing, but just hey, just hit me out, hit me out, hit me out. This <laughs> go out there and break a leg. No, 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 hey, no, preach, no. brother, preach, man. Do your thing. Don't let that man deter you. It's that. It's like I, ain't. but no, like everybody say, plus in their immediate say, like this will be the 49ers. I say the 49ers can go fall with Trey Link because. He got the more athletic gifts than Jimmy G. The only mm-hmm. thing that Jimmy G got on Trey Lynch is experience. That's about that's about it. Experience matters. It do. But since now Jimmy G is going to be the starting QB for the for the for the rest of the season, mm-hmm. now Kyle um, now Kyle can go back to his his traditional offense. Now. You got a nasty running game. You got one of the best tight ends in the game. You got one of the best switching nice, switching nice wide outs in the game. And yeah. you, you, and you still got a top five, a top five defense in the back. All you got to do is just lead us, just and lead us, and beat the Rams twice. Do whatever Arizona and somehow beat the Rams twice. Yeah, yeah, they would. And then somehow oh, confidently. That confidently? He said all you gotta do is beat the Rams twice. I don't agree with that. That's that's a tall t- I, <laughs> okay. I would say no. I would say I would say split. I can yeah. say I, I can say I can say split. Okay. But I think the 49ers, they they are more equipped now to go deeper in the playoffs okay. because they had a quarterback that mm-hmm. lived guiding to almost another Super Bowl opinions against against the ring. Uh, so, okay. um, I mean against the against the Bengals. Okay. Fa- okay, so I mean like he is right. They do have the experience factor with Jimmy G. So I do get that. What's y'all trepidation though with Jimmy G? Or do you have right. any trepidation? No 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 it's no trepidation sir at all. All right so real quick I just stated that if you're in NFC is up for grabs this year, right? Uh, wide open. Prior to Trey Lance going down, even with me saying that, I didn't think that they had a chance of forget making a uh, Super Bowl, making a playoff with Trey Lance because I felt like this was going to be a growing period for him. But also, mm-hmm. you look at the pieces they have around there. You have the veteran group around him, right? Um, mm-hmm. You have the the Debo's. You have who's going through. People forget Debo is trying to leave this offseason. Like people forget, people don't mention that. So that always caused some type of turmoil, whether if you want to admit it or not. You have uh, George Kittle, who I have on my fantasy team. Uh, the fool hey, I playing that. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, you have IR right now. That's terrible. Yeah, I mean, your running back core can't stay healthy to save their life. So you need a quarterback that's mature, that's a veteran, that's been in some some tough environments that you know what I'm saying could rally the troops in that huddle during times like that. People don't pay attention. They have a lot of injuries going on. They have, again, some stuff going on, right? And this is a year where it's wide, pause, wide open, right? In the NFC, you have a chance to do something. That can be pressure for Trey Lance. And I mean, when Washington plays Chicago, Chicago is a team that's trying to figure it out still, right? Uh, we saw that last year. They have a young quarterback. Trey Lance looked terrible in that game. People tried to blame it on the rain. Damn that rain, man. Listen. Jimmy G came bad. in 150 passing yards, a rushing touchdown, a passing touchdown. As soon as he touched that field, that offense clicked because he knew where to put people. He knew, I'm not sure if he's changing plays at the line. Of course, uh, you know, some quarterbacks have that that privilege to be able to do that, right? 
Uh, it just seemed like that offense seemed a lot more confident, moved a lot more smoothly. And they don't need to put up 50 points per game. Like I said, they got a defense. They have a, a run game that can control the clock. And you have the, the big play guys on offense that can make a play when needed. Possession receivers that can also go out there and get you a big a big 50-yard uh, touchdown, so to speak. So they have all the things. And one of the best coaches in the league. They're better with Jimmy G. They've always been better with Jimmy G. But we live in a world now where narratives can crush somebody's career. Jimmy G took him to a Super Bowl and was one completion to Emmanuel Sanders away from winning a Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes, right? Yeah. He also took him to an NFC Championship where they beat the Green Bay Packers. Regardless of what his numbers were, that's not always the biggest thing. Green Bay Packers had one of the best defenses last year. Jimmy G still took them down to get a field goal to win a game. When Brady was doing that in his early career, people were giving Brady credit. Now we don't want to give Jimmy G credit. You don't need to put up 300, 400 yards. Can you guarantee your team to win? Too. Like that, like that's the issue. We see What's what that? Every, we see what everybody's doing. The Patrick Mahomes, the Josh Allen's, like they're putting up godly yeah. numbers. And then you see Jimmy G, and, who looks like a game manager. Like, yep. oh, buddy, you're just a PM right now. Like, no, no, right. we, I don't think Jimmy G won us the game. But in reality, and all yep. I care so about is that you yeah, but to that, you brought up those names because you're exactly right. Think about Justin Herbert. Think about uh, 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 Ab Josh Allen, right? Think about all those quarterbacks. Now take Patrick out of this, right? Pat Mahomes out of this. How many of those, even Aaron Rodgers, well, no, Aaron Rodgers been, well, no, he's beaten Aaron Rodgers three times in the playoffs, right? Two or three times so far in the playoffs, right? Jimmy G. Think about all those other quarterbacks with all these crazy stats and all this ability. How many times have they made it to a Super Bowl, let alone two NFC championships over the past five years? Jimmy G's been there twice, been twice. in the Super Bowl once. He's beat Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback over the past five, well, over the past decade. He's beat him two times, two plus times. Is it, right? is it fair, though, to say that he's had a tremendous, like, team everywhere he's gone? Patriots, men, 49ers. Like, he's had a tremendous, like, hand dealt to him it's like you play buddy yeah but so Trey, he always yeah, got I'm gonna answer that right here because you're absolutely right but look at their win percentage with him without him they're winning 60 plus percent uh 60 plus percent of their games with him without him they're winning like 20 to 30 percent of their game so you're right he has had a team but that team has not been anything without him on the, on the field you know so i mean that just is what it is the numbers are there to support that does it support it for the Patriots? Because I thought in the Patriots, they were, when they replaced the... Uh, well, they only played like three games for them. Yeah, yeah but like, like that one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I, I, I'm just I, talking I to friends. They put yeah. for the 49ers they, when Jimmy gets injured, like before Trey Lance. Like, it, it was just Jimmy for me. Like, I, like the backup for Jimmy, does that factor in? Because maybe the backup's just ex like extreme trash. And he just can't well, do anything. What? Well, bro, that's part of my point, too, with Trey Lance. <laughs> mm. Is that you, you can't win with Trey Lance right now? It's a lot okay, now. okay, okay. You can't so win with Trey Lance. It kind of goes into the Jalen Hurts thing to me, as far as just that ability to pass that ball, and okay. you know what I'm saying. The way you, you're gonna need be need, you're gonna need to be able to pass that ball come October, November, December. I got That's you. All. I got you. So then, Ant, let me ask you this question, both. Can we can we expect to see Jimmy G? For MVP, I'm just saying, like, no, no. If they get high no, enough. You know my what I mean? Like, said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, the, the Christ. thing is, Trey, right? Come so, on, Trey. one, there's a lot of shit we know here. A lot of things we know. Sorry, we know for certain Jimmy G wins. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. He wins, right? He does things at times where he will cost you a game, and. For instance, in the Super Bowl, that throw to Emmanuel Sanders, you cannot miss that. That's game ceiling. Last year against the Rams, if I'm not mistaken, the 49ers were an interception away from closing that game out, right? Guy drops the pick. What does Jimmy G do either before or after? My, my chronological order is kind of screwed up here. Jimmy G threw an interception at a very bad time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So Kyle Shanahan sees these things and he's like, all right, I got a guy who wins. I got a guy who knows my offense. I got a guy who I can't trust in high leverage moments. So what does he do? Which was kind of stupid, right? Because if you got Jimmy G on your roster, and he's getting you to all these points. You kind of work, you work with that, right? Why, you know, if it ain't broke, don't break it, right? So then 
he sees this, they gave up a lot to get Trey Lance. He sees this shiny new car. He got a car to get him from A to B and get him to C everywhere else. But he sees this shiny new car, right? Trey Lance, the kid can run, 6'4", 220, 215. He can throw. Kyle Shanahan in that West Coast offense, his mind goes. I got that Kaepernick ego, again. That ego kicks in. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Hey, he got, 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 hey, got, 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 got himself a nice car from what it looked like. Like the commercials sold him beautifully. So I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. So he goes, okay, I'm tired of this guy who I high leverage moments is hit or miss, right? But I got this new kid here where my offensive play calling, which we know Kyle Shanahan's a top three offensive genius in the NFL right now, he goes, I can work with this. I can get this over the hump because I can add a whole new element to my scheme with this kid that I, that I can't add with Jimmy G, right? Yeah. So I get it from that perspective, but no, why would you even do that? Because you didn't need to really get to that point in the first place, right? You bring Trey in, if it's a point in time where it's a developmental thing, your team isn't really where it needs to be. And that's when you bring in the Trey Lances of the world. You got Jimmy in the NFC where you could have easily won the previous year. You got to run that back. You got to figure that out. Right. Instead of just revamping a new kid who's going to go through his growing pains, who I think eventually will be good because you can't be bad in a Kyle Shanahan offense. It's a West yeah. Coast offense. It's built on play action. It's built on an intermediate game in the short game. You can't be bad with that. With a guru <laughs> play caller like him, and you know his dad in the cut somewhere giving input, you, you can't you can't sure. really screw that up. So okay. they they kind of they're lucky they were able to keep Jimmy. And they're lucky Jimmy don't have an ego. Because if Jimmy was on some BS, it's like nah, get me out of here. Y'all want to replace me? Nah, I'm not coming back here. Get me out of here. I'm out of here. Mm. Yeah. That, that's what could have happened, but they're lucky. That's right. They're lucky that's right. Jimmy is, is, you know, a professional, as they call it. And you just, yeah. you know, let teams do whatever they want. They call yeah, you a I mean, professional. They, they but, don't do whatever they want at the end of the yeah. day. So. Yeah. I, I do kind of wish, you know, Jimmy G was on was on my squad, personally. Y'all can have Baker Mayfield. Who's your team? Panthers. Panthers. Tough oh, shit. Uh, shoot. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. It's not on today's agenda. I just want to throw okay. it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't go down that road. We're running for Jimmy G. We're in the running for Jimmy G. Um, Quick question. And, I mean, it, it can be rhetorical. Um, or it's not even a question, I guess. But I forget who said it, but it actually made me wonder why. Well, I guess I know. Anywho, so the question somebody asked was, why do we have to rush quarterbacks into becoming franchise quarterbacks right away. Why don't we allow them to sit behind veteran quarterbacks for a year, two years, like it used to happen in the past, right? At least a year, right? You think about the, the, the Aaron Rodgers of the world. But yeah, you have some quarterbacks who sat and came out, they learned the game, the pressure Probably wasn't on them immediately. Yeah. yeah. And then boom, okay. right? Okay. Um, okay. Now, yeah. after your veteran no, has no, one no. bad game, but the reason why, though, I feel like is because of the Patrick Mahomes of the world. Like, people, People expect you to be good within three seasons. If you can't give me something, or, or I'll even say two, because the first year, all right, he's young. After that, no, he needs to tighten up. Like, the world's just impatient. Like, even in basketball, like, we expect, okay, he didn't produce his rookie year. We left a lot. We let go of Lonzo, my boy, and we didn't think yeah. long term. Like, there it is. Going, yep. oh, bro, we there was, it is. A point three rebounds and three assists away from averaging a triple double for the season. Like chill out, but people don't like things long term. Darian Fox playing better than him one game created a narrative that just dread for no reason. A very good basketball player and getting better by the year. So I get what you're saying. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying. And, and mind you, we don't even mention that Lonzo was dealing with his mama having a stroke back in the end. So like that happened when Darian Fox played him. I'm not. And I'm bro, afraid. But you're profound. Yeah. Like, you're not that's at the time. You're supposed to hoop still. But, like, stuff like that is going to weigh on you. I'm quite positive. Right. So, we saw what happened when everything was going well for Lonzo Ball. He yeah. cooked there in Fox. But, again, we just are way too impatient with people. So right. I, I was cool right. for Sam Darnold, not trying to get on the Panthers too much. I was cool with letting him start, personally. I understand yeah. why you let Baker start. But I think Sam, hey, bro, give him another shot. He got, he got gypped a little bit on the Jets. Last year, he was looking like a white Michael Vick out there before he got injured. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael who? <laughs> My, like, Michael uh, Vick. Vick. He, was, he was moving them puppies out there. I'm trying to Michael tell you. Michael Pick. Oh, My man said Michael Pick. 
<laughs> Matter of fact, no, like, Big no, like, no. Rod, bro. Your statement you said is like illegitimate too, because when we had uh, a Joe Flacco, mm-hmm. I think it was the year that we drafted at the ball, dude. Mm-hmm. John said, John said, it's time for a change. And then as soon as we put Lamar in that same season, we mm-hmm. won the uh, division. Two years later, number one seed put on the MVP. Mm. Yeah. I mean, people are impatient. You just got to yeah. put a little time. Um, Social media, but, bro. Social yeah, media. yeah. Uh, that is true. That is true. That is true. That is Social true. 